గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ యాస్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద హిందూ న్యూస్ అనాలిసిస్ డిస్కషన్ సెషన్ బై శంకర్ ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ ఫర్ ద డేట్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిత్ ఆఫ్ మార్చ్ టూ థౌసండ్ ట్వంటీ టూ దీస్ ఆర్ ద లిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ వీ విల్ బీ డిస్కసింగ్ టుడే నౌ లెట్ అస్ గెట్ ఇన్ టు ద డిస్కషన్ ఫస్ట్ లెట్ అస్ టేక్ అప్ దిస్ న్యూస్ ఆర్టికల్ అస్ ద టైటిల్ సజెస్ట్ ఇండియా హాస్ టెస్టెడ్ టూ సర్ఫేస్ టు ఎయిర్ మిజైల్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ద ఆర్మీ వర్షన్ ఆఫ్ ద మీడియం రేంజ్ సర్ఫేస్ టు ఎయిర్ మిజైల్స్ ఇన్ షార్ట్ ఎంఆర్ శామ్స్ so in this context let us see about surface to air missiles and mr sams see basically missiles are of many kinds they can be classified on the basis of their types launch modes range propulsion warhead type and even based on its guidance system as you can see here depending on the launch mode that is based on the method of launching the missiles it could be classified into eight kinds and one among them is surface to air missile This missile is designed for launch from the ground to destroy aerial targets. The aerial targets could include enemy aircrafts, helicopters and even ballistic missiles. So, surface to air missiles are also called as air defense systems because they defend any aerial attacks by the enemy. So, with these basics, now let us see about MR SAMS. See, it is an advanced network centric combat air defense system. It is a supersonic missile with a medium range. It provides air defense against aerial targets like fighter aircrafts, unmanned aerial vehicles, guided and unguided munitions and cruise missiles. See, it was jointly developed by the DRDO that is Defense Research and Development Organization of India and Israel Aerospace Industries. They also collaborated with the Indian industries comprising of both public and private sector including MSME in the manufacturing of the MR SAMS. Okay, so note this point. And this missile is one of the best state of the art missile system in the world. Let us see why. First, it provides both point and area defense for both ground assets against wide range of threats. So what is point and area air defense? the air defense could be employed in two different postures they are area defense and point defense here area defense is the coordinated defense of a specific area by a variety of systems but point defense is a posture designed for the protection of a specific and usually a small area such as a vital installation or a individual unit see for example area defense is used to protect a city like chennai and point defense is used to protect a specific installation like kalpakam nuclear power plant now coming back see the mr sam provides both point and area air defense this is why mr sam is one of the state of the art missile that is available in the world now let us see the second reason which makes the mr sam unique MR SAM is capable of engaging multiple targets at the range up to 70 km. It is also capable of engaging targets from extreme low altitude to high altitude and also targets from very close range to medium range. So this is the second uniqueness of MR SAM. Now the third reason that makes MR SAM unique is that this missile is powered by the indigenously developed rocket motor and control system. This enables the missile to achieve higher maneuverability during the terminal phase. See, a missile has three phases, namely booster phase, mid-course phase and terminal phase. This terminal phase is the portion of the flight of the missile that begins when the warhead or the payload re-enters the atmosphere and ends when the warhead or the payload detonates or impacts. If it is a missile that does not exit the atmosphere then the terminal phase begins when the warhead or the payload reaches the apogee or the climax position and this phase ends when the warhead or the payload detonates or impacts so during the terminal phase an incoming missile's trajectory descends through the lower atmosphere towards the targeted aiming point therefore this is the most important phase in the whole trajectory of the missile because it is when the missile will hit the target by employing an indigenously developed rocket motor and control system the terminal phase of the mr sam is highly maneuverable this makes mr sam a deadly weapon okay so along with this mr sam has high response and quick reaction times also this missile is networked in the modern iacs system of the indian air force IACCS stands for 
Integrated Air Command Control System Projects. It is an automated air defense system. It is capable of synthesizing and presenting information from various radars, satellites, mobile observation posts, airborne early warning centers and aerial drone videos. See, basically IACCS was conceived for the air defense of Indian borders. Now, the networking of MRSAM with IACCS will help in defeating all type of hostile targets. This includes targets that have extremely low RCS. What is RCS? RCS stands for Radar Cross-Section. See, RCS is the area that could be seen by the radar. So, lower the radar cross-section, lower the detectability by a radar. So, therefore, RCS is the primary measure of stealth or lower observability of an aircraft, missile or ship. And MRSAM could hit targets having extremely low radar cross-section also. Finally, note that there are different variants of MRSAM that are used by the Indian Army, Navy and Air Force. That's all about this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the MRSAM, which is the collaboration between India and Israel and the unique features of MRSAM. With this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this text and context article. It mainly talks about the dependency of the European nations on Russia for its natural gas needs. It also gives a clarification of how far the liquid natural gas exports from US will help the European nations to reduce the dependency on Russia. So this is about the article. So in this discussion let us cover all the important points mentioned in this text and context article because these points will really help you in answering your mains questions. The syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here. You can go through it. Now let us start our discussion. First let us start our discussion by seeing the dependency of the European nations on Russia mainly when it comes to its natural gas needs. Russia supplied over 150 billion cubic meters of gas to the European Union last year. Just have a look at this spice chart. This pie chart represents the natural gas imports of Europe from various source countries. From this, you can see how much the European nations are depending on Russia for their natural gas needs. So presently, Europe relies on Russian exports to meet 40% of its natural gas requirements. Also, it relies on Russia to meet a quarter of its crude oil needs as well. This is regarding Europe's dependency on Russia for its natural gas. When you move towards Eastern Europe, the dependency on Russian natural gas is further high. When you take Germany and many countries in Eastern Europe, they depend on Russia to meet more than 80% of their natural gas needs. Okay? I hope you have understood how much Europe and mainly Germany is depending on Russia to meet its natural gas needs. This is about Europe's dependency on Russia. Now let us see what are all the problems Europe faces because of this dependency. Firstly, Europe has a fear that Russia could cut off its energy exports. Since Europe is at the mercy of Russian energy exports, Europe has limited its response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. See, the next thing is that when Russia limits its gas exports to Europe, gas prices in Europe will increase. This is because when Russia limits its exports, there will be a demand supply mismatch in Europe. The second problem is that recently the European Union has aimed to become carbon neutral by the year 2050. The European Union has been heavily investing in renewable technology like wind and solar. But as you know, the renewable source of energy is unreliable. So the European Union must have some source of conventional energy production to complement the non-renewable energy transition that it is about to make. And of all the conventional source of energy production, it is the gas-based power plants that are less polluting. So, to effectively become carbon neutral by 2050, cheap natural gas supply from Russia is required. So, Russia plays an important role in the European Union's energy transition. Okay. The third problem arises out of the indefinite stopping of the Nord 2 pipeline project. See, this pipeline project was mainly planned to ensure direct supply of gas from Russia. See, the other gas pipelines that connect Russia to Europe passes through Ukraine. Once completed, 
Nord 2 pipeline ensures reliable supply of natural gas to the European Union. But this project was stopped because of the Russia-Ukraine issue. This is the third problem for Europe. As the project, once completed, could have ensured reliable supply of natural gas has now stalled. This is a problem for Europe. As a solution to all these problems, the European Union came up with a plan. The plan is to cut down its reliance on Russian gas completely before 2030. How is it planning to do so? It is planning to do so by importing liquefied natural gas from the United States of America. Now let us see about the US-Europe deal on liquefied natural gas and how this will help in addressing the above problems discussed. Okay. See, the United States and the European Union have made a liquefied natural gas deal. This deal says that the United States will supply 15 billion cubic meters of liquefied natural gas to the European Union this year. Further, the European Union will import additional liquefied natural gas of at least 50 billion cubic meters until 2030 from the United States. Okay, just have a look at this graph and observe that the US is ensuring more LNG supply to Europe on an year-on-year -year basis. Okay, now the question arises: Will this reduce Europe's dependency on Russian energy exports? Will this help in neutralizing the Kremlin's influence on Europe? Now have a look at these two graphs and compare. You could see that when the import from the US is increased, the dependency on Russia can be gradually reduced. While in 2019, Russia supplied 44% of Europe's natural gas needs in 2020 that has declined to 39%. So, with increasing liquefied natural gas imports from the United States, slowly Europe's dependency on Russia for natural gas needs will decline. So, we can say that the United States-European Union deal on liquefied natural gas will reduce Europe's dependency on Russian energy exports to a significant extent. See, this deal, that is the US-EU deal on liquefied natural gas marks the beginning of the efforts by the European Union to diversify its energy source. This will help Europe to end its reliance on Russia. Further, to bring significant change, gas imports from the United States have to be made cheaper because, as we know, gas imports from Russia were cheaper. So, by building a efficient supply chain, the LNG imports from the U United States can match the price of cheap Russian natural gas. Okay. Another important effort Europe could make to reduce the dependency on imports of natural gas as a whole is by increasing the reliability of renewable energy resources like wind and solar energy. Because this will help the European Union meet the target of achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. Okay, that is all about this news article. See, in this segment, we discussed about the dependency of the European nations on Russia, mainly when it comes to natural gas. Then we saw the problems faced by Europe because of this dependency on Russia. Finally, we saw how the United States-European Union deal on liquefied natural gas will help Europe in reducing its dependency on Russia for its natural gas needs. That's all about this discussion. Now, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this editorial. This editorial talks about the level of unemployment in the country. The author discusses the reason for unemployment and thereby discards government's claim of employment generation. So in this discussion, let us see these reasons. The syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here. You can go through it. Now let us get into the discussion. See, many of us think that unemployment has risen due to the pandemic. But India's unemployment rate was high even before that. Even one of the official sources such as the Periodic Labour Force Survey released by the Ministry of Statistics and Programme Implementation provides proof. As per the Periodic Labour Force Survey, which was carried out in 2017-18 period, the unemployment rate in the country was 6.1%. Even the private think tanks revealed that unemployment rate was further worsened due to the pandemic. If you look at the data by Centre for Monitoring Indian Economy in December 2021, nearly 53 million, that is 5.3 crore Indians were unemployed. Among them, a large proportion was unemployed women. But on some scale, the government is claiming that employment generation has widened due to its various schemes and programs like 
ஆத்ம நிர்பர் பாரத் ரோஜ்கார் யோஜனா பிரை மினிஸ்டர்ஸ் எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஜெனரேஷன் ப்ரோக்ராம் தீன் தயால் அந்தோதய யோஜனா தட் இஸ் நேஷனல் அர்பன் ரைவ்லிஹுட் மிஷன் த ஆத்தர் ஆஃப் திஸ் எடிட்டோரியல் டஸ் நாட் அக்ரி வித் த வியூஸ் ஆஃப் த கவர்மெண்ட் அக்கார்டிங் டு த ஆத்தர் அன்எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஹேஸ் ஓன்லி ரைசன் டியூரிங் த பேண்டமிக் த ஆத்தர் சேஸ் தட் டியூ டு த இன்க்ரீஸ்ட் அன்எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் மெனி யூத்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபோக்கஸிங் ஆன் கவர்மெண்ட் ஜாப்ஸ் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒய் டு பீப்புள் ஆஸ்பயர் ஃபார் அ கவர்மெண்ட் ஜாப் இட் இஸ் பிகாஸ் கவர்மெண்ட் ஜாப் லேக்ஸ் த நெகட்டிவ்ஸ் தட் அ ப்ரைவேட் ஜாப் ஹேஸ் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ப்ரைவேட் ஜாப்ஸ் ஹாவ் புவர் பேசிக் பே அண்ட் லாங் ஒர்க்கிங் ஹவர்ஸ் பர்டிகுலர்லி த ப்ரைவேட் ஜாப்ஸ் ஹாவ் ஹை ஜாப் இன்செக்யூரிட்டி பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் தேர் ஈஸி ஹையர் அண்ட் ஃபயர் பாலிசி திஸ் இஸ் நாட் ப்ரெசென்ட் இன் த கவர்மெண்ட் ஜாப் பர்டிகுலர்லி டியூ டு த பேண்டமிக் மெனி ரியலைஸ்ட் தட் சுச்சுவேஷன் கேன் வேர்சன் எனி டைம் அஃபெக்டிங் பிஸ்னஸஸ் விச் அல்டிமேட்லி லீட்ஸ் டு த க்ளோஷர் ஆஃப் பிஸ்னஸ் ஆர் லேயிங் ஆஃப் ஆஃப் எம்ப்ளாயீஸ் டு சேவ் த பிஸ்னஸ் ஸோ திஸ் ஹேஸ் ப்ராட் மோர் அட்டென்ஷன் டுவர்ட்ஸ் த கவர்மெண்ட் ஜாப்ஸ் பட் த இஷ்யூ இஸ் அக்கார்டிங் டு த ஆத்தர் தேர் இஸ் நோ எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஜென்ரேஷன் even at the government level now let us see a visible indicator of unemployment crisis in india first such indicator is the influx of over qualified youth in government jobs here the over qualified individuals or youth would be those who have post graduate degree or a phd degree and apply for matriculation level job in the government these over qualified individuals put pressure on the existing level of employment mainly in government jobs how look at this example the himachal pradesh secretariat called applications in september 2021 for the post of pun gardener and cook and many of those who applied had a doctorate or post graduate qualification now these middle and lower rank government jobs only provide modest pay why are the over qualified candidates still applying for such position they apply because it will offer them greater job security which is not available in the private sector see this influx of over qualified applicants or individuals in lower rank and middle rank government jobs create three issues the first is that individuals with minimum eligibility are forced to compete with candidates who have higher educational credentials so obviously this will lead to more faces or more levels of recruitment process and if the job has qualifying exam like in the case of ssc then it will also increase the cut off the individuals with minimum eligibility will find it difficult to achieve such increasing cut offs with their very limited means and limited educational credentials so this is the first issue now let us move on to the second issue the second issue is that over qualified applicants are crowding the jobs of those with minimum eligibility see basically the jobs eligibility criteria are kept at a certain level to ensure only those with that eligibility can apply but when over qualified applicants are applying then those with minimum eligibility have to compete with a much larger proportion of applicants so it eliminates a large number of applicants or aspirants from that job this is the second issue now let us move on to the third issue the third issue is that in the future the eligibility of medium and low level government jobs will increase that is there will be arbitrary enhancement of educational qualification for recruitment into better paid jobs including the government jobs for example already in the public funded higher educational institutions the eligibility is quite high even for entry level teaching positions currently they mandatorily require a phd in addition to a masters degree and a ugc net qualification then what about those with just a masters degree and ugc net qualification even though it is a high level qualification still they are not eligible for the teaching position since they lack phd degree so arbitrary enhancement of educational qualification affects those with medium qualification and they will be left unemployed leading to increased unemployment rate in our country now these are the issues that the influx of over qualified applicants in entry level government job create see until now we saw one indicator of increasing unemployment that is influx of over qualified applicants in entry level government jobs now let us see the reasons for increasing unemployment rate see 
there is only limited government jobs why is it limited mainly because of limited number of post with the government but in the recent time we can also see another cause for this which is increased to contract jobs and outsourcing of several substantiative and permanent jobs so this is further limiting the number of government jobs available although the number of available government jobs is decreasing day by day those competing for those jobs is increasing day by day this is the reason for increasing unemployment rate in the country the next reason for increasing unemployment rate is the decline of state regulation of labor capital relations in the formal sector formal sector means where jobs have specific working hours regular wages and workers job is assured the decline of regulation could be seen since the liberation of economy in 1991 along with the economy during the lpg reforms of 1991 labor markets were also deregulated which provided opportunities for employers to cut excess cost by firing employees so even though job creation was high but they included only lower wages and uncertain terms why lower wages and uncertain terms it is because of the excess labor supply of less skilled workforce in our country this excess labor supply has kept the wages low this also leads to unemployment and the reason for individuals choosing government jobs over private jobs the next reason for soaring unemployment is due to government cutting down its expenditure on social security sector see currently government expenditure on social sector mainly education is reducing expenditure on education remains around 3% of gdp as per the economic survey 2021-22 this leads to shortage of government schools and public funded universities government schools and public funded universities play an important role in the education of those near or below poverty line see in this case less education means less qualification so this less qualification finally leads to unemployment see these are all the reasons for the current state of unemployment in india in addition to this post 1991 lpg reforms we are facing jobless growth only fewer jobs are created it also leads to unemployment and ultimately also burdens and exploits the existing employees by overworking them see overworked employees are unhappy right this is why the author says a tired india and an unemployed india are simply two sides of the same coin so the way forward as always in this scenario is government intervention government must not only take measures to increase the number of government jobs available but the government should also take measures which will make the private jobs more dignified regulated and less exploitative this is all about this article now let us do a quick recap in this discussion we first saw that unemployment in india was not just due to the pandemic and the problem of unemployment existed even before the pandemic in that we saw that according to the periodic labor force survey which was carried out in 2017-18 period the unemployment rate in the country was 6.1 percentage then we saw why people are aspiring for government jobs there we saw that people are aspiring because in government jobs they are receiving manageable working hours job security and social security coverage which is not available in private employment according to the author the influx of over qualified aspirants in middle and lower level government jobs is an indicator of worsening unemployment in the country then we saw the issue associated with the entry of over qualified aspirants in middle and lower level government jobs the issues are first is people with minimum eligibility are forced to compete with people who are over qualified second is the entry of over qualified applicants will increase the cut off beyond the reach of those with minimum qualification the third is that there is the possibility of increasing the minimum qualification level altogether which will make the jobs inaccessible for most of the population and finally the entry of over qualified applicants will lead to increase in the number of levels in the recruitment process this will make the recruitment process more difficult okay 
see after this we saw about the reasons for increasing unemployment in that we saw that government job is limited and no new jobs are being created due to increasing contract jobs in the government the next reason for increasing unemployment is government cutting down its spending in social sector mainly education sector and finally government post the 1991 lpg reforms reduced the state regulation of private sector this resulted in easy fire and hire policy in the private employment this resulted in people choosing modest paying government jobs over high paying private jobs this is all about this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and move on to the next news article look at this article this article is taken from the text and context page this article briefly discusses how nras can register their vote without being physically present at their respective constituencies this article also discusses postal ballot and electronically transmitted postal ballot system that is etpbs system in this context we will briefly discuss about the voting procedure that is available for nris and we will also discuss about the electronically transmitted postal ballot system now let us start our discussion firstly you should know how overseas voters can currently vote in indian elections see prior to 2010 an indian citizen who is an eligible voter and was residing abroad for more than 6 months could not vote in elections see this was because the nri's name would be deleted from the electoral rolls if he or she stayed outside the country for more than 6 months at a stretch after passing the representation of people amendment act 2010 eligible nri's who had stayed abroad beyond 6 months have been able to vote but they can vote only in person at the polling station where they have been enrolled as an overseas selector that is they must be physically present while they cast their vote their address mentioned in the passport is taken as the place of ordinary residence and chosen as the constituency for the overseas voter to enroll in see in 2014 there was only 11846 overseas voters but this number went up right now there are about a lakh overseas voters this is according to the 2019 figures note that nearly 90% of these voters belong to just one state that is kerala but currently of these 1 lakh registered voters only 25606 have turned up to vote so clearly a very low percentage of eligible overseas residents actually registered and have turned up to vote nris having to be physically present at the polling booth have discouraged them from exercising their franchise even after registering to vote okay so to address this in the winter session of parliament in 2017 the government proposed to remove the restriction imposed by section 20a of the representation of people act that is the restriction which required them to be physically present to vote in their constituencies the bill was later passed in 2018 but lapsed because of the dissolution of the 16th lok sabha the election commission of india then approached the government to permit nris to vote via postal ballot similar to a system that is already available to the service voters here who are service voters service voters are the members of the armed forces of the union or members of a force to which the provisions of army act 1950 applies so currently this postal ballot is applicable only for service voters and since the bill to remove section 20a lapsed this provision of postal votes is not available to nra voters so having discussed about the present scenario now we will discuss about the etpbs that is electronically transmitted postal ballot system see the conduct of election rules 1961 was amended in 2016 to allow the service voters to use the etpbs that is the electronically transmitted postal ballot system under this system the postal ballots are sent electronically to registered service voters that is the postal ballots are sent via email after this the service voters can download the etpb along with the declaration form and covers after this they can register their mandate 
on the ballot and send it to the returning officer of the constituency via ordinary mail so the postal ballot will be sent by a email then the voter will register his vote in the ballot and he will send the ballot via ordinary mail this is the process this is about the etpb system that is available for service voters see currently the election commission of india proposed to extend this facility to overseas voters as well but for this to commence the law ministry has to amend the conduct of election rules 1961 in the case of nra voters those seeking to vote through etpbs will have to inform the returning officer at least 5 days after the notification of the election the returning officer will then send the ballot electronically via etpbs what is etpbs it is electronically transmitted postal ballot system see the nra voter can then register his or her mandate on the ballot printout and send it back with an attested declaration in a process similar to the service voter see this method that is the etpbs method allowed for greater turnout among the service voters in the 2019 lok sabha election so when etpbs is extended to nra voters voter turnout will definitely increase when more people participate in election process our democracy will become more vibrant and inclusive okay that's all regarding this news article discussion with this we have come to the end of the news article discussion session now let us take up the practice prelims question today we have four practice prelims questions let us see them one by one let us take up the first question see this is a map based question five countries are given we have to find which of the given countries has a land border with ukraine see if you know germany does not come near black sea you can eliminate two options that is b and d what i am saying here is if you have learned countries bordering black sea you can use it to eliminate options here okay now two more options are left see here you very well know that russia borders ukraine and we have discussed a lot about russia ukraine issue in our analysis so now we can conclude that the answer here is option c 1 2 3 and 5 so the countries bordering ukraine are moldova romania hungary slovakia poland belarus and russia okay so moving on to the next question this question is about nord 2 pipeline four options are given we have to find the correct option see from our discussion we know that nord stream 2 pipeline is a natural gas pipeline under the baltic sea to take gas from russia to germany so the correct answer here is option b now moving on to the next question this question is with reference to electronically transmitted postal ballot system that is etpbs two statements are given we have to find the incorrect statement let us take up the first statement ETPBS enables the entitled service voters to cast their vote. Let us take up the second statement. It is developed by the Election Commission of India. See here both the statements are correct. We have seen in our discussion that the ETPBS enables the service voters to cast their vote. Note that ETPBS is developed by the Election Commission of India with the help of Center for Development of Advanced Computing for the use of service voters so both the statements are correct but in the question they have asked us to find the incorrect statement so here the answer is option d neither one nor two now let us take up the last prelims question which of the following statement is correct with reference to the medium range surface to air missile recently seen in news four options are given let us see them one by one let us take up the first option it is indigenously developed by defense research and development organization and bharat electronic limited that is bell see this is incorrect because in our discussion we saw that mr sam is jointly developed by drdo and israel aerospace industries so option a is eliminated since option a is eliminated naturally option d that is all of the above is also eliminated now let us take up option b it is capable of engaging multiple targets at ranges up to 70 kilometers see this is correct from our discussion we saw that mr sam is capable of engaging multiple targets at ranges up to 70 kilometers so the correct answer here is option b see even though we know the correct answer let us see the other option also let us see option c mr sam can defeat 
all type of hostile targets except the one with extremely low radar cross section see this is incorrect because in our discussion we saw that one of the uniqueness of the mr sum is that it can even defeat targets with extremely low rcs that is radar cross section so in conclusion the correct answer for this question is option b the main question based on today's discussion is displayed here write the answers and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you liked today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel thank you